How's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna take a look at our next Palo Alto feature for interfaces known as V-Wire. So what is V-Wire? Well, there are cases where you don't want to, you can't re-IP address or inject another route or what have you into an environment, but you still need to provide the ability to inspect the traffic that's passing through the device. So Cisco's got the capability of doing transparent uh, transparent mode, uh, so does FTD, where in this case here, we're not going to be changing the mode of the firewall, we're going to be changing some interfaces to say, you know what, they're only going to, they're not even going to be layer two. So basically VWire is, is acting as if it's not even there. There's no, there's no MAC address learning, there's no IP addressing, it literally just passes the traffic between the two interfaces, and you can uh, inspect the rules that way. This would be great if you're trying to take advantage of a connection between an internet router and your default gateway, and you need to be inspecting the traffic. So this would be, that's a common place to put it. Um, there's been scenarios in the past where I've had to go out and deploy something like this, where you have the, you have an internet enabled device sitting here, right, here's your internet, and then coming off this guy you have a router. So this guy right here is terminating a public internet service, whether, I don't care what it is, what service provider you're using, but it's uh, internet communication. So you have some sort of public interface, public internet IP here. But you also have some public internet back here, meaning that you, the customer owns their own address space. So let's say this is, this is provider, um, this is provider, actually let me change this up a little bit. This is gonna be provider aggregated, meaning the provider is the one that's doing this connectivity between here and here. And then you have another box back here. This is provider independent, meaning that the customer owns the routes. You know, they own the slash 24 or whatever. So you take that capability. What you would do is right here is where you would inject your, this would be your, P, your PA firewall. And what you would do by doing that, you're injecting the firewall in between them but it's almost as if the firewall is in layer two mode. And you, you can do the same VWire, Palo, or, uh, VLANs, the same concept applies, but unlike the layer two capability of the interfaces, there's no MAC address learning. You're literally just inspecting the traffic as it's coming through. So um, you had to create a VWire object. You create the object and then once the object is created, then you map the interfaces. This interface here and this interface here will both be tied to a V wire. And then once that's done, then they're going to be able to pass traffic back and forth and go from there. So we'll go through the steps to get it working and operational. But testing wise, I'm not 100% sure if the VM supports it because in prior testing, it didn't work the way that it was um, advertised. So. I'm gonna, I know it works on physical boxes because a couple of customers that I've worked with have deployed VWire enabled firewalls in different parts of the network. There's been a handful of cu customers that I've worked with that have replaced ASAs with PAs. And I mean, it doesn't, I don't really care which way they go, but I've had to work with them. And then the Palo Alto does a really good job of doing tap mode as well. We'll talk about tap mode in the next video where we basically use the PA box completely out of band, and we use it just for network monitoring. So let's go ahead and take a look at those details. We go ahead and clear the screen. So we're gonna basically convert router four and router five, these interfaces, one slash two and one slash three, we're going to put them into VWire mode. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Let me go ahead and get out of the way. We're gonna go over to network. We're gonna go over to interfaces and on interface one slash two, we're going to change the mode or the type from layer two to be virtual wire. Virtual wire, there is none, but we can create one. We're gonna go ahead and the V wire, we're gonna call it V wire. And we're gonna say interface, we're gonna go ahead and click on okay. And we're gonna say the tags allow, we're gonna say tag zero. So basically just an untagged connectivity. We're gonna click on that. And then the security zone, we don't have one. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new security zone called V wire and click on OK. And then click OK there. 
And then what we'll be able to do is on Ethernet 1 slash 3, we will, layer 2 will be converted to vWire. The virtual wire will get mapped here, and the virtual wire will get mapped here. We're going to click on OK. And that's pretty much it. There's really not much more to it than that. Virtual wires, we can see the vWire is created. Link state pass-through is enabled. So again, it's not learning the MAC addresses. It's like, it's unlike any other networking capability out there. It's pretty much its own design, where it's basically treating itself as a physical wire. It's a virtual wire. So there's like, there's pretend like there's nothing there at all, and it's just an extension of the physical cable. That's basically what it's trying to do. We're going to go ahead and we're going to commit that. Click OK. And that what we're going to do is pull up Secure CRT. And we will see the connection go down. But now we've created a, a, um, a security zone. And remember, intra zone communication is allowed by default. We should be in pretty good shape. So we're going to let that commit. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while that's doing its thing. All right, so the configuration is in play. We're going to click on Close. And now that we have that in Close, we can go back to the Monitor tab and Session Browser. And because we have that communication going back and forth, if we come in here and we do a Show IP EIG RP Neighbors, we still have our neighbor. If we ping 10.4.5.5, the ping goes through. And if we refresh the session, we should see pings going back and forth. So we know it's working with vWire. And so if we wanted to do some advanced config, we could enable a, um, a policy for the vWire. So um, I don't think that I actually did the security zone before. Now I did, now I know it works. <laughs> but vWire, it does work the way that it's advertised. Um, so I, I've, the most commonly rolled out deployment for a Palo Alto firewall that I've seen is a vWire because people like to just stick it in place there's and they plug it in, right? And then it just acts as another, it just extends the cable between the interfaces. You know, it's like there's nothing in there, but you can clearly, clearly see through the ping data that it's it's working the way that it needs to. So we know that's working the way that it's, it's advertised. So, uh, but that's pretty much that. So we've done vWire as well, which as you can see is pretty straightforward. So we'll take a look at tap. We're not going to be able to demo tap only because of the fact that I don't have um, the switch. I don't have any devices in here that support tap mode. Or I mean, I don't have the ability of doing span on the switches that I'm working with. I mean, I probably could configure span somewhere in my network and connect it. But um, as a matter of fact, let's just talk about span real quick. Uh, the tap mode. Let me go back to over to network, and then uh, we'll go to interfaces. And we'll just pick a random interface. We go ahead and grab this. We'll say we'll grab one slash seven because nothing's physically plugged into one slash seven. So like one slash seven, for example, you can communicate. The type is tap, and then you would obviously create a security zone called tap. And what that basically would allow you to do is think of it like a Wireshark collection. So I can sit there and grab a bunch of information from that particular interface and then I can just start to see what's happening. So if you have a network device, like a switch, that you can basically do a port mirroring on, let me whiteboard this out a little bit, just so you guys can follow along. So the concept is actually very simple. Let's assume that we have a switch sitting here, and we have, let's say we have our internet router here, we'll just say IR here, and we have our edge router here, and so between these two guys, we're passing data back and forth. We'll say this is VLAN 10, this is VLAN 10. Well, what we can do is we can create a span port and say, okay, on the monitor session, when we configure it, we'll say the source is gonna be VLAN 10, right? And the output port, let's say, is this guy, which is gig zero slash eight. So our output is gonna be on gig zero slash eight. So what's gonna end up happening is all the data going between these two ports in VLAN 10 will actually get piped or mirrored or port copied, however you want to refer to it, to gig 0 slash 8. Gig 0 slash 8 will be plugged into a Palo Alto firewall, PA here, and this port right here will be configured as tap mode. 
if I could write. The tap, you create a security zone for it, and then what's going to end up happening is all that data is going to come into the into the firewall, and the firewall is going to be able to look at it and go, oh, there's a whole lot of information here. So then if you want to, this is data collection. Think of this like intrusion detection. So I'm sure you guys have heard of IDS, IPS. This would be an IDS system, okay? An IDS means it's out of band, and it's only looking, seeing what's happening, taking information in, stuff like this. This right here would be IPS mode where you're in the data path and you have the ability of going in and be a, via a security policy blocking traffic if you want to. So think of those details as you're going forward in your career. IDS is out of band, IPS is in band. So you're actually, you're physically in the way of the traffic. Traffic has to physically pass through you in order to get to where it's gotta go. So I have seen, there's been a, a few customers that have proof of concept Palo Alto and tap mode was used. We brought in uh, like a 5000 series, I believe it was. It was some larger platform, I think, or 500, 5000. I don't remember. I don't have the, the platforms memorized, but we took a, a very a larger platform box that was able to handle the, sorry, 5200. That's what it was. I knew I was in the neighborhood. Anyway, we took a, we took a larger box, we plugged it in on a spam port, and then we just started receiving data. We started receiving data. What that gave, it gave us a lot of visibility because then we were able to use app ID and content ID to look at the details and figure out what's going on in the network, look at the session, look at the logs. And by doing that, we were able to get a much better idea of what's going on because at the time we were using older Juniper NetScreen firewalls. They were doing the job, but they're no different than a, layer, than a regular layer three or layer four firewall. So it didn't really give us the, the visibility that we needed. PA did. We never went with PA only because of the fact that we never did. I thought it was a good idea, but I was, well, I was overruled by somebody else. But you know, it is what it is. At the end of the day, we were looking for the ability of taking the information in and being able to figure out what we wanted to do with it. I was in favor of Palo Alto. They were not, so it, we never went forward with it. But that's basically what tap mode is designed to do. Um, I don't have a tap mode option. I probably could figure it out, but at the end of the day, it's not a big enough deal for me to, to monkey with it. So that's basically how that process comes into play in case anybody was wondering, but uh, that's that's the long and the short of it. So um, you've been able to see VWire in this video. We talked about tap. Uh, we're gonna talk about uh, layer three sub interfaces in the next video. Until next time guys, take it easy.